No, I'm about to go in. Tell me that I couldn't do it, but I gotta bring it back. So they're really not with it. Let's go. Tell me where you're from, where you stay. Now I keep it lit from the coast to the bay. Peace on the right. If you guys are sick of wasting money on packs, go check out my sponsor. They offer the cheapest and most reliable way to buy coins straight from the source. Use code MAZE at checkout for 15% off your entire order. On the channel, you guys may have noticed, I haven't been uploading gameplays as much as I did last year. And the reason for that is, is because it's the start of the year. And what I really wanted to focus on was just building my team and getting a really good team before I got really deep into the gameplay. And I know the title says 10 million coin god squad or something like that. I lied. I, I didn't spend 10 million coins. I feel really bad. But I did spend a little bit north of 9 million. All right. I spent nine and some change. And for a YouTube video, let's just round up, guys. Can we, can we all just agree? We, let's round up. Now, to be fair, I am going to be making an addition to the team in the next couple days. It is going to put me right around the 10 million mark. I do have the coins for it. I just haven't made the purchase yet because I'm waiting for the prices to drop a little bit with the promo that comes out today. But with that said, I am going to be showing you in this video where I spent my coins, why I chose the players I did for assembling my team, and essentially all the ins and outs of my Wallet Warrior God Squad. Now, I do understand that not everybody's going to be able to have a team as good as mine, but I hope when you watch this video, you understand why I'm picking some of the players I do and why, you know, they fit into my scheme, and hopefully it can help you build a team of your own based on what you run. And also, it's a lot of fun just watching people spend coins in Madden. I don't know why. I enjoy watching it. I hope you do too. You clicked on the video, so I hope you enjoy the video. But as always, guys, before we get into the content, we're going to go over the best and the worst comment of the day. The best comment of the day coming from HTown27BBC. He said, Bill Nye, a pretty cool dude, bro. And I just want, I want to clear the air. Okay, in my last video, I made a comment about Bill Nye. No disrespect to Bill Nye. I fucking love that dude. Bill Nye, if you're watching this... I really doubt you are. But if you are, I fucking love you, Bill Nye. And the worst comment of the day coming from Jeremy Young, who said, This blitz comes in faster than dad. OMG. So here we are in the lineup. I have a completely blank lineup. And how I'm going to organize this video is I'm going to go position group by position group and kind of reveal the players I chose. I'm going to go into the details of why I chose them and how they fit into my scheme. Maybe when I'm going over my cards, you guys can learn something about what I look for in a card, you know, some certain stats that I think are more valuable than others. Uh, how to build a team around your scheme, because that's really important when choosing players. How are you going to utilize them? For example, if on defense you run a lot of man-to-man -man coverage, you're not going to want to get a physical zone cornerback. You're going to want to get a fast, speedy man-to-man -man corner. And for example, if you run a 3-4, you're not going to want to get a 4-3 outside linebacker. And there are certain stats that make some cards a lot better than others. And it's not always just the overall that matters. Now, to start, I want to talk about how I got a lot of these coins for this team. So, A, if you saw my video, I've opened over $1,000 worth of packs. I've opened a ton of packs this year. And I know that doesn't make sense to a lot of people why you'd spend so much money on a game. But again, in my defense, I am a content creator. This is what I do. This is my full-time job. And I see it as an investment into myself. So, I've spent a ton on packs. I've also bought some coins. And again, if you're trying to build your team... Use code MAZE for 15% off. But additionally, I've also done a lot of wagers. I have won almost every wager I've done so far this year. So that's added, I would say, at least 1.5 mil to my coin stack. I did the Barry Sanders set, which was a lot of work. It took me hours and hours of just doing the set. And uh, I, I probably, I don't know how much I profited off that, but I definitely made a profit on the Barry Sanders set. I've also done a good job of doing my solos. I, I've done a lot of solos. I've leveled up to level 50. That's another 700K. And overall, these things just add up. Playing head-to-head -head is another great way to earn coins if you just grind head-to-head. -head. You make probably about 100 to 150K if you win your Super Bowl. So again, if you're a good player, there are ways to make coins in online play. Starting off with the actual lineup, though, we're going to be going over the O-line first. And as you guys see here, I have my entire O-line loaded in. And you're going to notice that four of the five guys are the Team Diamonds from the Barry Sanders set. And that is because they are by far the highest overall for O-line. Now, recently, a Joe Thomas left tackle was released that is better, in my opinion, than the left tackle Team Diamond. So I got Joe Thomas, put him in there. But other than that, I didn't put a ton of thought into my O-line. What I look for in guys is, is balance because I... 
I think a great offense is able to run the ball and pass the ball, keep the defense on their toes and not really knowing what to expect. So all these guys are probably top of the line at their positions right now. And because I did the Barry Sanders set, I had all of them in my binder already, plus their power up. So all I needed was a training to get them to where they are right now. But when building a team of your own, think about the type of offense you run. Again, like I said, I know I like to balance between run and pass. So I need somebody who can do both. But if you only pass the ball, there's no need for you to get a run blocking O-line just because their overall is higher. They're not actually going to play any better for you if their pass blocking stats are not good. So when we're looking at my center, Travis Frederick, you see he's got 89 pass block and 89 run block. That's what I mean when I say he's very balanced. You know, he's good at both. Now, I don't really look at pass block power and finesse or run block power and finesse. I just look at the general stats. Now, I don't know if there's anything deeper to go into there, but that's just what I go off of. Um, and I'd recommend you do the same if you're choosing somebody. Again, if you only pass, you know, maybe go for somebody who, who's maybe a lower overall, but has higher pass block and lower run block. You might save some coins that way. Moving on to the tight end position, we got Jermichael Finley, 90 overall. This is, in my opinion, by far the best tight end of the game. Better than Rob Gronkowski. The reason I chose him, there's two reasons. The first is he's got 83 speed and he's 6'5". That's, that's very good for a tight end. He's not the tallest, but 83 speed is, is very, very fast for a tight end. And then the biggest thing I actually looked at was 91 medium route running. And if you guys didn't know, the threshold for route running is 90. So 90 or above on route running is going to play much much better than 89 so it's it's a bummer that his short route running is at 89 i don't really run too many short routes with him but that 91 medium a majority of the routes i use my tight end on are medium routes so he is absolutely toasting his man coverage when he when he gets on a medium route like a corner or a post Jermichael Finley is going to be open. So again, Jermichael Finley, that 91 route running, even his non-powered up card, the 89 has 90. So even if you can't power him up, Jermichael Finley is, at least right now, the best tight end in the game. But again, that's because I like to use him in the pass game. If you like to run, maybe look into getting a more run blocking tight end. Those guys are going to be a lot cheaper and slower, but... They're going to do a, a much better job in the run game than someone like Jermichael Finley. I use him for passing mostly. That's why I got him. Moving on to the wide receivers here. We got Mark Clayton, Tyree Kill, Jerry Rice, and Jerry Judy. Now, Jerry Judy's actually a stud, and he goes for about 50K. So most people are going to be able to afford Jerry Judy, and he, he gets the job done. He's really good. But he is my number four. Let's focus on the top three. Mark Clayton, Tyree Kill, Jerry Rice, why I chose these guys. So once again, it's a combination of speed and and route running. Now, Jerry Rice isn't the fastest, but he does have really good route running across the board. The one bummer about Jerry Rice, if we take a look at this card right here, he's got 89 short route running, 89 medium, and 88 deep. So I already told you guys, the threshold for elite route running that's going to really be game-breaking is 90. So he's just like one short in all the categories. It is a bummer, but he is he does get good ability. So I put... Uh, route tech on him, route technician, which is going to make all of his routes better, help him beat man coverage, which is the meta right now. And he's got good catching and solid speed. 87 speed's not slow at all. And with that route tech, that route running is going to be phenomenal. So that's why I chose Jerry Rice. Moving on to Tyreek Hill, everybody knows his speed is crazy, right? Tyreek Hill's a burner in the NFL and in Madden. That's what makes him so valuable. 91 speed is crazy. However, his deep route running is extremely high. With the go deep chem, you get that deep route running above a 90 and once it's above a 90 like I said that threshold is just what we look for right there uh, he's gonna be toasting people on deep routes deep post deep crossers 91 speed over 90 route running it's just it's not even gonna be close so for me and my team Tyree Hill was a must-have I run him on deep routes a lot and I don't even put any abilities on him or anything just as is he's good enough probably the the best if top two receiver in the game right now now the final receiver is mark clayton the cool thing about mark clayton is his base card is an 86 so even if you can't afford to power him up you can still get the lower version for a lot cheaper i got him to a 90 overall here 89 speed a tad bit slower than tyreek but still very very fast and look at that route running it's at 90 on his deep route running medium route running is an 88 so if you run a different chem and you want to put that up above 90 you can uh, but 89 speed plus 90 deep route running good catching stats. Mark Clayton, in my opinion, is the most well-rounded best receiver in the game right now. The bummer about Mark Clayton is he's only 5'9", which kind of sucks because I do like tall receivers, but 
Uh, his other stats totally make up for it. Again, in my opinion, Mark Clayton, the number one must-have receiver in the game right now. Now, my final receiver is Jerry Judy. And like I said, this guy's more of a budget guy. He's an 84 overall, going for right around 50K. 6'1", 88 speed. He's got 80 route running for short, medium, and deep. Uh, so that's solid for an 84 overall. And, and he's got 80 catching. So Jerry Judy... If you are balling on a budget, and I say that lightly because I feel like most 50K is not even that cheap. 50K is still expensive. But Jerry Judy can compete with the top receiver. I would say Jerry Judy's a top five receiver in the game right now. For 50K, that's a steal. So if you guys are running, you know, not a God squad, if you're no money spent, like you can afford 50K, save up. Another really, really good budget receiver is 84 overall. Uh, Justin Jefferson. Justin Jefferson has almost identical stats to Jerry Judy. I don't actually remember why I chose Judy over Justin Jefferson. They both go for about the same price. They both have almost identical stats. So Jerry Judy or Justin Jefferson, both really, really solid. Now, another unsung hero is Keenan McCardell. I only have him at an 87 overall right now, but you can get him all the way up to a 90 if you want. He gets his medium route running above a 90. So that threshold, again, is super important. So if you do, I'm actually, I'm actually considering putting Keenan McCardell in place of Jerry Rice. I don't know if I want to do that. He is, uh, I think, one speed slower, but his medium route running is above 90, and that's going to let him torch man-to-man -man coverage on a lot of routes. So another guy that you guys can look at if you're trying to build a team of your own is Keenan McCardell. Very, very solid receiver. Moving on to the running backs, I told you guys already, I did the Barry Sanders set. He's a 93 overall, by far the best running back in the game, and like I said, I spent a lot of time on the set, so I did get Barry. Um, I just, I couldn't sell him, right? He's got 91 speed, extremely fast, 94 change of direction, 94 agility, and 92 break tackle. His acceleration is also 94, and acceleration this year means a lot. Uh, I, I've noticed that acceleration plays a big difference. He has 88 carrying, which is a little bit low, but fumbles were also tuned down this year, so carrying is not a big deal. Uh, I, I, I've never fumbled with Barry Sanders. I've played probably 40 games with him, and he hasn't fumbled once for me. Now, I don't hand the ball off a ton to him. It's not like I spam stretch over and over and over again, but Barry has not fumbled for me at all. Now, obviously, not everybody's going to be able to afford Barry Sanders, but my backup is Cam Akers. And if you guys, again, are balling on a budget, this Cam Akers is ridiculous. He's got 88 speed, 82 change of direction, 89 agility, and 91 excel. Cam Akers plays like a beast as well. Very fast on the field, very quick in his cuts, and he goes for, again, around 50K. So if you are balling on a budget, save up for Cam Akers. Get this dude. He will definitely get the job done. Plays like a high top-end card. Now, I don't use a fullback in my lineup, I have Cam Akers, who's my backup running back, as my starting fullback, so that's why he's there. Another guy, if you guys have a lot of coins, Work Done. He's probably second to Barry Sanders. Work Done is insane. He's got, I think, like 89 speed and really high change of direction. And Work Done actually is a really good receiver as well in the backfield. So if you like to throw to your running back a lot, Work Done might be the move for you. He does run around 300 to 400K, though. So it's pretty expensive. But uh, if you can afford it, Work Done solid as well. On to the quarterback. Now, this is something I've been kind of going back and forth about. Because I've been switching between Lamar and Dan. I'm not really sure who I want to use. I'm actually at the point where I'm considering using them both and just switching them off mid-game. I know that's crazy to think about. But right now we're rocking with Lamar. 91 overall. He's got 90 speed, 90 throw under pressure, 91 throw power. I will say I noticed his throw power. It's a little weak. Even though it's a 91 and that should be like good right now, he just... He's been kind of bugging me. He misses a lot of throws, but he's crazy fast. I do like to run with him. I have designed QB runs, and so I that's why I chose him over Dan Marino is just because it adds a whole new layer to my offense, a new thing to worry about. And with Dan, you don't even need to put out a QB spy, and that always kind of bugged me. You know, it gives them one extra person in coverage. And so with Lamar, there always needs to be a spy. They always need to be worried about him taking off or doing a design QB run, and so I really like that. I know a lot of people got Lamar with their pre-order, but right now, Lamar is definitely the best mobile quarterback in the game. Game. He does miss a lot of throws, though. I will say, I I've noticed Lamar, he's a little bit frustrating. But that is the entire offense, you guys. Uh, I'm an 88 overall. The main reason for that is the fullback is just a 70 overall. I don't really care about my overall. I just more care about the players that I have. And frankly, right now, I don't think there's anybody I would add to my offense. I know they're releasing a Julio Jones today, but he's a limited, so he's going to be very expensive. So I probably will not add him. Uh, and they're going to release some new legends. So depending on who the legends release, I might add some new people this weekend. But right now, I am very happy with my offense. I like the way it looks, and they play phenomenally. Moving to the defensive side of the ball, we're going to start with the D-line. And I'm going to keep the D-line very short and sweet. You're going to notice only one of these guys is powered up. Only one of them is a 90 overall, and it's Justin Smith. And that's because of this entire D-line, Justin Smith is the only player 
that is seeing the field. These guys rarely go in and that's why I didn't upgrade them. That's why I didn't get, you know, the 90 overalls at all the other positions. And that's what I mean when I say know your scheme. I run nickel 335 wide, okay? So I have my right outside linebacker rushing off the right, my left outside linebacker rushing off the left, and I have my right end Justin Smith at the defensive tackle position. And those are the only three rushers I have. So these other three linemen, I didn't want to waste any coins on them. Like I said, from the Barry Sanders set, I had the team diamonds. I just plugged those guys in. I didn't bother upgrading them or wasting training on them or anything like that. So know your scheme. If you are not going to have a defensive tackle to ever see the field, don't waste your coins. Spend your coins on something that's actually going to add value to your team. Again, I know my scheme and these three guys are not seeing the field. So I didn't really care that much about him. But taking a look at Justin Smith, he's 6'4", 80 speed. He's actually very, very fast. And that's a, a big reason why I really like Justin Smith. 89 block shed, 90 strength, 90 tackle, and 89 power move. Those are the main stats that uh, are important on him. Additionally, I'm going to go over all the abilities at the end. But I have uh, inside stuff on Justin Smith. Because like I said, he's at the defensive tackle position in 3'3'5", right over the center. So on any inside zones from shock or anything like that he's shooting right up there and blowing it up and he plays very very well moving on to the linebackers this is another situation where i didn't spend unnecessary coins the two linebackers on my team that see the field are adelius thomas and elvis dumerville those are my two pass rushers off the end i put edge threat on both of them and i gotta say these guys are freaking expensive i think they're the two best pass rushing outside linebackers in the game and I use them as pass rushing. So if your scheme, you're not using your outside linebackers for pass rushing, then don't get pass rushing linebackers. They're going to be slower. They're not going to be as good in coverage. Uh, the interior linebackers, I have Bobby Bell and Cole Holcomb. The reason I have these guys, they're just really fast. They're going to be better in coverage than, you know, your standard middle linebacker. Cole Holcomb, I believe, has 85 speed, which is absurd for an outside linebacker. Adelius Thomas has 84. So these guys have some serious speed, especially for a pass rusher. I'm going to take a look at Elvis Dumerville's uh, speed. I don't actually know what his speed is. Uh, but speed's not obviously that important for a pass rusher. Elvis Dumerville has 81 speed. So these guys are not slow by any means. Elvis Dumerville... 87 power move, 90 finesse move. That threshold, I don't. I think it's at 90 as well for uh, pass rushing. That 90 finesse move is going to become uh, a really big factor on the D-line. And then Adelius Thomas, I actually feel like Adelius Thomas gets more pressure than Elvis Dumerville does. But he's got 89 power move and only 72 finesse move. So uh, it looks like Elvis Dumerville has better pass rushing stats, but Adelius Thomas is faster. And I don't know if that speed plays a factor as to why I notice him more, but I feel like he's making a lot more plays and pressuring the quarterback. A big reason for that is is probably because most people are using Lamar Jackson right now. So your pass rushers, if they're slow, they don't really stand a chance because even if they get a shed and they get pressure, Lamar is fast enough, he's going to be able to roll out and run away from them. But when you have somebody like Adelius Thomas with 84 speed, you know, that's not as fast as Lamar, but it's a lot faster than most D-linemen. So he's going to be able to get there, get the sack, and finish the play. Moving on to the cornerbacks, guys. These are... The studs. We got Dre Bly, Troy Vincent, Asante Samuel, and AJ Terrell. Now, AJ Terrell is another one of those 84 overall team builders that's going to go for around 50K. Let me show you stats. He's got 90 speed, so one of the only guys that can really keep up with Tyreek Hill. Only 77 man, which isn't great. Got 82 zone, though. But that speed and acceleration really keeps him in plays when maybe his coverage would have failed him. So that 90 speed is really important to me, and it makes him play very well. Some other team builders that are really good, Trey Waynes, he's probably a little bit better in man coverage, but he's also got 90 speed. And then I think Nevin Lawson is also another one who has really high speed. So there's about three of these 84 overall team builders corners that you can use you get them for about 50k each and they're gonna play again they're gonna play like those top top shelf cards now something recently i'm doing to change so troy vincent and asante samuel they are both typically zone coverage corners but i use them as man-to-man -man corners i'm trying to change that up a little bit so if you look at their stats right here troy vincent's got 88 speed and 92 zone coverage that that 86 man coverage is good, but 92 zone is just ridiculous. 88 speed is solid as well. And then Asante Samuel, I believe, also has 90 plus zone coverage. If we take a look at Asante Samuel over here, he's gonna he's got 93 zone coverage and 90 speed. So Asante Samuel, another guy, gonna play out of his mind in zone coverage. And then Dre Bly is a man to man corner, the best man corner in the game right now. He's fast, he's got 89 speed, and he's got 90 man coverage. And again, these are after my chems are added on right now as well. So, 5'10", 89 speed, 90 man coverage, best man corner of the game. I run nickel 335. What I'm going to be doing is switching Dre Bly to my slot corner because I need him manned up in the slot, and then I think I can have Asante Samuel and Troy Vincent 
play a more zone role on the outside. So overall, that's what I'm trying to do with my DBs. The addition I'm going to be making, as I told you guys, I'm going to be adding Rod Woodson, the new legend cornerback in the game uh, this weekend. His price, I'm assuming, is going to go down when the new legends drop. And when they do that, I will scoop him up for a lot lower. I think he goes for like 500 or 600,000 coins right now. I'm not looking to spend that much on a corner. I can wait a few more days and get him for, I'm hoping, around 300, 350. I don't know if his price will drop that much, but we will find out. But overall, these three corners, in my opinion right now, are three of the best uh, with Rod Woodson coming in probably at the top spot. But once I get Rod Woodson, I think I'm going to have the best corners in the game. And when you're running a lot of man coverage, that's really important. You need playmakers out there that are going to be able to stay with their receivers or else running man coverage becomes a nightmare. Now for the pride and joy of my defense, my safeties. If you look, I have four of the best, if not the four best safeties in the game right now. Steve Atwater at free safety, backing him up at free safety. We got Ty Rand Matthew, the Honey Badger. Adrian Wilson at strong safety and backing him up. Isaiah Simmons. Now, the reason I have four all-star safeties is because I play Steve Atwater at one of my top safeties, but I bring Tyran Matthew, Adrian Wilson, and Isaiah Simmons all down into the linebacker position. So, again, I run a nickel 3-3-5 wide. You have three linebackers on the field. All three of those linebackers are replaced by safeties. So, Isaiah Simmons is my user. I, he's the best user in the game. Let's take a look at his stats right here, and you're going to see exactly why he's the best user in the game. 90 speed at 6'4 with 90 acceleration. It is ridiculous how fast he can cover the field compared to other players. And this dude, I promise you, has built-in lurker. I have jumped routes being 10 yards underneath him. Isaiah Simmons is a user unlike any other in the game right now. And that's why he's going for so many coins. He's going for like, you know, 350, 400,000 coins, which is crazy for an 87 overall. But it's because he just plays so well. And it's those stats that you look for, even though he's only an 87 overall, that 90 speed, 6'4", 90 acceleration, and high jumping with 88 hit power makes him the most valuable user in the game. Now, Adrian Wilson, the Team Diamonds, strong safety, has very similar stats to Isaiah Simmons. Uh, not as good for usering, but he plays a lot better uh, on his own. So I leave uh, Adrian Wilson out in coverage. Then Steve Atwater, you know, is good. Tyron Matthews is the one I want to look at, though. He's a strong safety technically. But you can add on a free safety position to him, and I moved him to free safety. And... The reason I really like Tyran Matthew is he's got 88 speed, which is fast, but he's got 91 man coverage and at 93 zone coverage. He is the best coverage safety in the game by far. With this man coverage meta, it's rare that you have a, a safety with high man coverage. Usually they have a lot lower man coverage, but Tyran Matthew also plays nickel corner. So because of that, they gave him high man coverage. He's above a 90. He meets the threshold, and this card... Doesn't play as well as his stats, I would say. Like, 91 and 93 for his, his coverage is insane. He doesn't play that well, but he definitely, definitely is the best cover safety in the game, in my opinion. But that is the defense, guys. Like I said, know your scheme. Know how you want to use these players, and that way you can get the right man for the job. It's not all about the overall. Different players have different play styles, and if you put the wrong guy at the wrong place, he's going to play poorly, even if he has a high overall. So I think I got the right guys for my job. Again, once I add Rod Woodson this weekend... I I think it will complete my defense. And the last thing I want to go over before we end the video is my abilities and why I'm using the ones I do. So if you go over to your uh, abilities, you have 10 ability points and you can use them however you'd like across your entire team. Now I'm going to show you guys, I have one ability point on Barry Sanders. It's reach for it, frequently gains additional yards when being tackled. I don't really know how valuable this is. I, 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 don't, I don't really notice a huge difference, but it gives me like a peace of mind. It's only one ability point in like just knowing on those like, you know, third and one, fourth and one, he's going to, he's going to be doing everything he can do to get that last yard. It's going to make me feel better than if I didn't have it on. You know, he got stopped in the backfield. I don't know. I just like having reach for it on Joe Thomas and Phil Lodeholt. These are my uh, tackles on the outside of my O-line. They have edge protector. That is because so many people on the defensive side of the ball are using edge threat right now. They have those D-line abilities. And if you don't have... A, a counter ability on your O-line, you're going to have a lot of problems with the pass rush. So these guys uh, with their edge protector abilities are able to hold up pretty well against the pass rush. I also put post up on Travis Frederick, who is my center. Post up is dominant when engaged in double team blocks. That's very vague. I don't actually know how good this ability was. Again, it's only one ability point. 
and I always see my center in double teams. My center is almost always double teaming with one of the guards. So I figured post up is going to be a good ability to have on him. He's going to be dominant in some way. I don't know what that means. Dominant in the run game, dominant in the pass game. I don't fucking know. I got four abilities on Lamar as well as an X Factor. The X Factor is can't fumble as a result of a tackle. So if I get that activated on my quarterback where now he cannot fumble, I'm going to be running his ass off. And so that's a very very valuable X Factor. I use Roaming Deadeye and Escape Artist. Escape Artist is three ability points, but it's very, very good for rolling out. I almost think it's necessary if you're using a mobile quarterback. And then Roaming Deadeye, the reason I use this is the Roaming Deadeye glitch. I don't know if you guys remember from last year, but it's perfect pass accuracy while standing outside of the pocket. So most of the time when you're making a throw outside of the pocket, it's on the run. So Roaming Deadeye would not work. However, if you let go of right trigger, the sprint button, right as you're about to let go of the throw, the computer thinks his feet are set, and it gives you the dead eye throw. And it can be cross body, it can be under pressure, it doesn't matter. There's no 40 yard limit. With dashing dead eye, there's a 40 yard limit. Roaming dead eye, there's no limit. So it is a little glitch. And if you guys have made it this far in the video, most people don't watch all the way through the video. But if you're watching this far in the video, there you go. Free glitch. Use Roaming Deadeye. It's only one ability point, And it is a very, very valuable ability to me for my quarterback. And then my last ability on offense is Jerry Rice with that route tech. Uh, route technician is two ability points, but it gives you quicker cuts while running routes. Very, very good for beating man coverage, especially if you don't have your route running above 90. If you don't meet that threshold, it can be very hard to beat your man. But with Route Technician, it becomes a lot easier. So I have it on Jerry Rice because he's just right on the threshold there. I think that makes him a lot better. It pushes him up to that top level. On the defensive side of the ball, it's a lot more simple. I got Edge Threat on Elvis Doomerville. That's three ability points. It's dominant pass rush moves from the edge. This is probably, I don't know, in my opinion, at least top two defensive abilities in the game. I have Edge Threat on Adelius Thomas as well. So both of my outside rushers have Edge Threat on them. That's going to make my pass rush very formidable out of nickel 335. As I mentioned earlier, I have inside stuff on Justin Smith. He's at my D tackle position in 335. So that's going to help me blow up any of those inside zone runs that people love to run this year out of shotgun. I think this is a really, really good ability as well. And then my final two ability points are used on Acrobat on Tyran Matthew and Isaiah Simmons. Now, Tyran Matthew, I haven't actually seen him make too many diving plays with Acrobat, but Isaiah Simmons, let me tell you guys, Acrobat is diving swats and interceptions. It's only one ability point. But when you have Acrobat on your user, you would be shocked at the balls they dive for and catch. Like, they catch like anything near them if you press triangle. They will dive for it and get it. So if you are thinking about, you know, what ability you should use, I really recommend Acrobat on your user. It's only one ability point, and it's going to make your user a hell of a lot better. Well, there you guys have it. This is my 10 million coin wallet warrior god squad. I'm actually, I don't usually have a god squad in Madden, so this is like the first year I've had like just a really, really crazy good team, and I'm having so much fun with it. So if this infuriates you in some way, go play Animal Crossing where you belong. But really though, I hope this video was not only entertaining, but also helped you learn something about building a team for yourself, what to look for, and how to build it around your scheme. Because at the end of the day, overall is not everything. You really want the right man for the job and how you're going to use him. So if you guys did like the video, be sure to leave a like down below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're new. I'll be seeing you guys in the next one. Now